Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about collections in Apex. There are mainly three types of collections in Apex. The first one is list, second one is set, and third one is app. In this video, we are going to focus on list. What is a list? A list is an ordered collection of elements. We can create a list of any data type, like primitive data types, list of collections, a list of edge objects, and a list of custom data types as well. For now, we are just going to focus on primitive data types. What we got till now, we got that a list is a ordered collection of elements. So let's say we have a list like this. So we have a list like this, and it is nothing but an ordered collection of elements. That means all the elements that are present inside this list, they are going to be ordered. Each list element has a particular index associated with it. And using that index, we can find out what is the location of that element in the list? Index inside a list always start with the number 0. So we can say that the first element inside the list has an index which is 0. The second element inside a list is going to have an index which is 1. Third element has an index 2. Fourth element is going to have an index 3. Fifth element is going to have an index 4. And sixth element is going to have an index 5 and so on. So this will continue. Now let's see how we can create a list. We can create a list by using this particular syntax. What I'm doing here, I'm saying list and then angle brackets. And within these angle brackets, I'm specifying the data type, or I can say the type of data that I want to store inside this list. So I want to create a list of string here, which is why I'm saying list of string. And then I'm going to specify the name of the list. So this is the name of the list, which is name. Now, you might have noticed in the previous tutorial as well, that if we define a variable, for example, if I say, let's say, string name, right? Now, this variable is by default going to be null. By default, this variable is initialized to null. Similarly, if I don't specify anything, let's say if I say something like this, list of string names. Now, this list is going to be null by default. But I don't want this list to be null, right? I want to add elements to this list which means that I should have some memory location which is assigned to this particular list. In order to do that, I'm going to do this. So I'm saying list of string names, which is the name of my list, is equal to new list. So I want to create a new list of the same data type, which is string, and then I'm having a set of parentheses followed by a semicolon. What this will do, this will initialize a new list in the memory. However, the list is going to have no element inside it. So it is going to be an empty list. Now what I can do, I can use the list name, which is names, and I can call add function on it. So you know, whenever you are having a variable name, and then a dot notation, and then you are having something or some keyword, uh, followed by parenthesis. And then you can also have some value which is passed within these parentheses, or you can have these parentheses empty as well. So this particular notation, we call it as a function. It will be more clear as we jump to classes and objects and all those things in future tutorials. But for now, you can just understand that in order to add elements to this particular list, I can call the add function and I can pass my value. So here I'm creating a list of string, which is why I'm saying I want to add the string, which is having a value Richard Hendricks into my names list. So I want to add this particular name to my list. Similarly, I'm adding more names as well. So I'm adding Monica, I'm adding Alec Bachman, I'm adding Dinesh, and I'm adding Gilfoyle. Finally, what I'm doing, I'm simply displaying my list of names. Let's execute code till here and let's see how it works. Now, if you see, this is my list. So my list is having a name as names and I'm saying here names is equal to, which is why I'm getting names is equal to. And then this is my list. So if you notice here, the first element inside my list is Richard Hendricks. The second element is Monica. Third element is Alec Bachman, fourth element is Dinesh, and fifth element is Gilfoyle. So I have five elements inside my list, and they are in the same order in which I entered these elements inside this list. So the first element was this, second was this, third was this, fourth was this, and fifth was this. So this is how the elements are added inside my list. Now what is going to happen inside the memory as we execute this code? It is going to create a list which is empty. And then it is going to add five elements to that list one by one. 
and as we add elements the list is also going to expand in size so we can say that the list was empty and as we added first element so it created one block inside the memory and this block stored the value richard hendrix so i can say this block stored the value richard hendrix and this was index 0 of the list after that what happened as we added monica another block added to the list so i can say this block had an index 1 and the value which was stored inside this list was monica so it was monica and this is also richard hendrix i mean i've just written rh for displaying it to you right here but it is having the whole value similarly as we added third element so it is going to create another block let's say like this and similarly for fourth element like this and for fifth element like this so i've added five values so it has five blocks and if i talk about each and every value so richard hendrix is going to have an index zero monica is at index one then we have alik bachman at index two so i can say eb here then we have dinesh uh let's say d it is at index three and then i can say at index four i'm going to have gilfoyle okay so this is the list which is created in my memory and as i display this list this is how it's coming right here now the next thing is how can we retrieve an element from the list let's say i want to get the second element from the list or i want to get the fourth element from the list how can i get that i can get that element using the index which is associated with that value so let's say i want to get the element at index 2 so i can simply say names which is the list name and then square brackets and within the square brackets i can specify the index whose value i want to retrieve so i want to get the element at index 2 now if i execute this code what it will give it will give me the value which is present at index number 2 and this is nothing but a lick bachman so it will give me this particular value let's execute the whole code and let's see how it works so i can say i want to create a list i want to add elements and i want to retrieve the element at index number 2 so if you see this is what i am getting i am getting element at index 2 is equal to alik bachman so this is the element which was present at index number 2 now let's say i want to replace an element at particular index just to specify once again this element is present at index 0 this is present at index 1 this is present at index 2 this is present at index 3 and this is present at index 4 now the next thing is that i want to replace an element at a particular index so let's say at index 2 i currently have alik bachman right i want to replace this value with a new value so what i can do i can simply say names dot set so this is another function named as set i'm going to pass the index at which i want to store a new value and i'm going to add a comma and then i'm going to pass the value that i want to store or i can say the new value that i want to store at that particular index so instead of alik bachman i'm saying i want to store gavin belson at index number two so i can say names dot set two and then given belson and then i'm displaying the whole list once again so let's execute this whole code and let's see what happens if you see right here this was my earlier list and if you see this was index zero this was index one this was index two this was index three and this was index four and then i mentioned element at index 2 is equal to a lick bachman which is correct right and then what we did then we executed the code to update the element at index 2 to gavin belson so what happened this is my updated list so this is again index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 this is index 3 and this is index 4 so if you see all the other values are same but the value at index 2 is updated from a lick bachman to Gavin Belson. This is what we have done right here in this particular code. Now there are multiple ways to do the same thing. We can set a new value at index 2 using the set function as well and we can also use the square brackets to update the value at a particular index. Let's say I want to update the value Gavin Belson back to Erlich Bachman at index number 2. I can also do it like this. So I can say names then square bracket where I can say the index number 2 and I want to assign a new value which is Alik Bachman to this particular index in the list. If you remember in the variables and data types we discussed that whenever we want to assign a value to a variable we are going to use the equal to sign and this is going to store the value to this particular variable. Similarly 
it is going to store the new value is alec bachman to the element in the list at index number two and again i'm displaying the whole list let's execute this code and let's see what happens so i'm executing everything from top to bottom right here and let's see what is the output so if you see initially at index number two we had alec bachman so i'm saying element at index two is equal to alec bachman then we updated that index with a new value which is gavin belson and then we have Kevin Belson at index number two, the updated list. Then we again updated that value with the earlier name, which is Alec Bachman. And again in my list, the index two is updated with a new value, which is Alec Bachman. So there are multiple ways to do the same thing, but this is how you can update a value inside a list. Now, you know, it might happen that you want to update a value at an index that doesn't exist in the list. For example, my list only has index till four, right? Because my list has five elements. So if I show you right here, this is my list, right? And I have index zero, I have index one, I have index two, I have index three, and I have index four. So I only have index till number four. But here what I'm doing, I'm trying to update a value at index number 10. And this index, this index number 10 doesn't exist in my list. So what will happen if I execute this kind of code? Let's try this once. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to execute the whole code. So if you see, my code executed fine till here, where I'm updating it back to Alec Bachman, which is this particular line. And then I'm getting an exception. So what it is saying, it is saying list index out of bounds 10. And it is coming right here. At this particular line, I'm getting an exception, which is saying list index out of bounds 10. This means that the index that you have specified to update the value inside your list that index doesn't exist. Okay, that index is out of bounds, which is why Salesforce cannot assign a value inside the list at that particular index. You can try the same thing with this code as well. If I say names of 10 is equal to Jared Dunn, and I can execute the whole code. Let's execute this once. And if you see, even if I use this particular notation, I'm getting the same error. This index out of bounds 10. So I'm getting the same error right here as well. So it doesn't matter which way you are using to assign a value. If the index is not present, then it won't let you assign a value at that particular index. Now there are two more things that I want to cover in this particular video. The first thing is, how can we display the size of the list? For example, you want to know that, you know, how many elements are present inside a list. So what can you do? You can just say names, that is the name of your list right here. And you can call the size function. So you can just say dot size. What it will do, it will give you the size of the whole list. Or it will tell you how many elements are present inside the list. Let's execute this code and let's see what happens. If you see, I'm having all the outputs uh, up till I updated Alec Bachman. And then I'm having this output which is saying size of list names is equal to 5. If you see, size of list names is equal to this is what I have written and here also I'm getting size of list names is equal to 5. So this is the size of my list. And why is it 5? Because I have 5 elements inside my list. So this is element 1, this is element 2, this is element 3, this is element 4 and this is element 5. So I have 5 elements which is why I'm getting size of list names is equal to 5. Therefore using the size function you can find out how many elements are present inside your list. Now let's say you want to clear the whole list. That means you want to make the list empty again. What you can do? You can simply use the list name and you can call clear function on your list. So as you say names.clear, it will clear the whole list. So what I'm doing here, I'm clearing the list and then I'm displaying the size again and I'm also displaying my whole list. Let's execute the code till here. And let's see what happens. This is going to be the last function that we are going to study today. Let's see the output one by one. First of all, displaying my whole list, which is coming right here. Then I'm saying element at index two is equal to this particular value. So element at index two is equal to Alec Bachman, which is correct. So this is zero, this is one, this is two. And uh, then I'm saying, I want to update the element at index two to Gavin Belson. So the element is updated from Alec Bachman to Gavin Belson. After this, I'm saying 
that I want to update the element at index 2 again to Erlich Bachmann. So the element is again updated from Gavin Belson to Erlich Bachmann at index 2. After this, I'm saying the size of list names is equal to names.size. So size of list names is equal to 5 because I have 5 elements inside my list. Then what I did, I cleared my whole list. So the list is empty now. After this, I'm again displaying the size of my list. So I'm saying size of list names is equal to names.size. So the size of my list names is equal to 0. Because in this case, I don't have any element left inside my list because I have cleared my list. So the list is empty now, which is why it is having the size as 0. And if I display the whole list here, it is going to be empty. So you can see this is an empty list. So in this particular tutorial, what we learned, we learned how can we create a list? How can we access elements of a list? How can we update element at a particular index inside our list? How can we display how many elements are present inside our list? And how can we clear the whole list? Now, I have a homework for you. Here we created a list of string. I want you to create a list of different data type. For example, you can also create a list of integer using the same syntax. Instead of mentioning string here, you can mention integer and then you can pass integer values inside your add function instead of string values. So you can create a list of integer using the same format that I have specified right here. Try this out on your own and I will see you in the next tutorial.